have a more interesting one. I have a story time that, I mean, you could if you want. Use it as like a thought-provoking piece about balance patching. This was in the early days of balance patching. If I'm not mistaken, this was in 2013. So when you think back to 09, which is where a lot of gen my generation of fighting game peers started, right? With something like 2009's Street Fighter 4, 2011's Mortal Kombat. That's kind of where these where these games began. And from the get-go, some of these games did not have patch culture as a thing, right? Street Fighter still had on disc, buy the new disc, you get the new version of the game, buy the new disc, you get the next version of the game. You look at something like Soul Calibur 4 that had patching, Mortal Kombat 9, Mortal Kombat reboot, whatever you want to call it, that also had patching. And we'll be looking at the earliest, um, the earliest recorded patch that completely killed a character. I guess that's the easiest way to put it. I could be wrong, right? Maybe it didn't completely kill the character, but the fact still stands. This character went from perceived top one to perceived bottom one. I want to show you guys something. I think my glasses may have already snitched me out. Let me show you guys a character. You guys know who the hell this is, right? I don't have to explain what you're seeing on the screen, what character this is. This is Scorpion. It looks like Scorpion, right? So if you know anything about Mortal Kombat, in, during the Midway era, or even the NRS era, the current era, this still rings Scorpion. This looks like Scorpion. But this isn't Scorpion from a Mortal Kombat game. This is actually, in fact, Scorpion from the DC fighting game, still made by NRS, Injustice. And for you Zoomers who have never played an Injustice game, there's been two Injustice French, uh, two Injustice games so far. Injustice 2 and Injustice 1. Injustice 2 came out something in, like, mm, I want to say... PS4 era, I don't remember when Injustice 2 came out, I won't lie to you guys, I'm not even going to pretend like I think it was 2017, but I could be wrong, let's say 2017, 2018. Injustice 2, I, I mean Injustice 1 I believe was 2012 or 2013, right? These are older fighting games, very very old fighting games, or I guess old in modern standards. Now this character was a guest character brought in by the NRS division because they knew that they already were developing Mortal Kombat games, may as well bring the Injustice games, may as well bring in one of their other IPs with Mortal Kombat to the mix. It would bring in hype, maybe people who weren't a fan of some of the Injustice mechanics, the stage transitions, the back to block instead of pressing a, a button to block when it comes to Mortal Kombat traditionally. Maybe they would try the game if they had a character that they resonated with more by putting him in. I think another thing they did, if I'm not mistaken, was maybe just a little overtune the character. Maybe just a little make him stronger than a lot of the other characters on the roster for that DLC privilege. We know about modern DLC privilege. Yeah, yeah. Happy Chaos. Yeah, yeah. Leroy Smith. We already know all about that 2B from Grand Blue. 2B from Soul Calibur. We know all about that early, that more modern, more recent DLC privilege. But what we don't know about is that this DLC privilege, in some instances, even existed all the way back then, in the early era of patching when it comes to fighting games. So, from what we know of this character, people assumed that he was the best character in the game, that he was top one, undisputed, should be, should be picked among the highest in the game if you want a chance at competitive success. We can see this from old forums. We can go back and look if you guys want. We don't really need to. I'm sure if you go do a little bit of research yourself, you'll see how much this character got hate because of how strong they were when it came to the competitive aspect of the game, maybe even just the online aspect of the game as well, because a lot of these forums were not by the highest of caliber of players. They were more likely by weaker players, maybe some scrubs that thought they were relatively good at the game because they made it to a decent rank in the online proponent of the game. Now, there was a, a tournament that Scorpion existed for at his full power strength, and that was CEO 2013. CEO 2013, I can show you guys, I could show you guys the stats, but if I do, you guys will see what's, what's going on, so we'll just kind of give you guys a little more preamble. There was four Scorpions in the top eight of this tournament. Four Scorpions in CEO 2013 top eight. That is half of the top eight. That is a huge margin. That is a, that is a lot of players picking this character who is perceived to be the best character in the game. Now, what I'm going to do 
if you guys don't mind, I want to show you guys. I want to show you guys the grand finals. Maybe not the full thing, right? But let me just pull up the grand finals. First of all, I'll show you guys the faces of grand finals. Here are the faces of grand finals. Here they are. PL, perfect legend, versus Chris G. You're like, whoa, Chris G, isn't that guy like a Marvel guy and like a like a Capcom guy? What is what is he doing playing Mortal Kombat? Excuse me, Injustice. He's a fan of Injustice. He played a lot of Injustice. Actually, as a matter of fact, I could go ahead and spoil it. He won the tournament. Let's move over towards the back half. Let's move over to the back half of this, shall we? It's very low quality, as you guys can tell. But as we see on the screen, in Grand Finals, we see Perfect Legend on Cyborg and Chris G on Green Arrow. Green Arrow. So it looks like out of the four Scorpions there were, there is one in this Grand Finals, technically. TL did play Scorpion earlier in the tournament, right? So one of the Scorpions made it to Grand Finals, but... I can tell you now, he didn't actually pick Scorpion for any of the Grand Final sets that existed. And as you can tell, the Scorpion player is currently not winning the tournament. He's down 2-0, and this video is pretty short, so if I show you guys the rest of this. person who picked Scorpion earlier in the tournament, though he did not use con Scorpion to convert his way into uh, top 2, doesn't look like there's much of a chance left for him to win this tournament. So, for Grand Finals, there is no Scorpion at all there's no scorpion i can show you guys the results now as we've made it that far it looks like the tournament was won by chris g himself with the green arrow i can show you guys the results we have chris g getting first with no scorpion perfect legend using a little bit of scorpion black adam and of course also just he's got like four characters five characters that he played i believe he also played batgirl and cyborg right those are the others uh, KDZ on Superman. And then we see two more Scorpions. Three more Scorpions back to back. Deg, Rio, and CD Jr. All names that you know of, highly if you ever followed any competitive Mortal Kombat during the NRS era, Rio, uh, CD Jr., KDZ, and Perfect Legend. All names you'll know, right? Even Rico Suave, Saltface. Pretty common names. There you see Tom Brady down there and 16 bit down there. Pick of the Hut as well. All ninth place. But none of these names converted their way to a top one placing. None of the Scorpion players converted themselves into a top one placement. Shortly after this, there was a pretty big list of nerfs that I unfortunately could not find the actual nerf page through like NRS and through Warner Bros. So I just have to go off of this Game Facts, GameSpot uh, board post, you know. Uh, so, here is some of the nerfs that happened to Scorpion. I believe the patch that Scorpion got nerfed because he got hot fixed and then nerfed again. And they, apparently, completely killed Scorpion's competitive viability. So, this is a character who was thought to be, perceived to be top one, nerfed to the point where if I show you CEO 2014's results... There was no Scorpions in the top 8. I have it pulled up. I can show you guys for further proof. This is a case of a top tier that never won anything. This is probably the first case of a top tier who didn't have a chance to win and was nerfed to the point of competitive unviability. So let me show you guys. The 2014. Let's go to Injustice. I know it existed here. Yeah, there it is. There it is. So we see some of the same names. We see, oh, yeah, we see Deg, we see Chris G, we see Gross, we see Pig of the Hut, who was ninth, and we see Saltface. Then we see Perfect Legend in ninth instead. I don't see 16-bit anywhere. Yeah, there's a few names missing, but as you see, there's no Scorpions except PL. PL is the only one, and PL did not make top eight. PL got ninth place with Martian Manhunter and Scorpion. So as you guys can tell, his competitive viability when completed through the window. Now, you can say that he still did okay because of the fact that Perfect Legend maybe piloted him some point in the top 16. So, Scorpion saw a play in the top 16. Perfect Legend is one of the greatest players to ever touch the Injustice and Mortal Kombat and the NRS games. 
can't take that away from him, no matter how much people meme him now. During the during the Injustice and Mortal Kombat 9 era, he was one of the greatest players to touch the game. He could probably beat most people with whatever character he wanted. So, this is a one-off when you think of the greater scheme of this, right? When it comes to a big contention, now it's a 0% retention rate. None of this character made it into the top 8. This is the earliest version that I could find. And this is probably the only version of this I could find where a character went from ubiquitously considered top 1 and then nerfed to bottom 1. I could show you guys the shitty event of Injustice 1 tier list if you want. Without ever actually being able to win anything. I'm sure he's going to be a bottom 1 or somewhere in the bottom 3. There was about 30 characters in this game, so to go from arguably top one all the way to bottom one in a 30 character roster is kind of criminal and yeah, there he is in bottom three yeah i said he was either gonna be bottom one or bottom three like people considered aries bottom one as well there was a world where people considered the joker bottom one as well so i could see i see all of these people totally understandable i'm not here to argue that they're not also bad characters but they weren't at some point considered all the way up here with the best characters in the game. Crazy thing to think about, right? That a patch can completely change how strong someone is from the top of the game all the way to the bottom. There's very few instances where I, I think this happened where characters get completely gutted. You could say another one is something like Quan Chi in Mortal Kombat X. Generally, these big sweeping changes, I'll admit now, happen in the NRS games. They don't usually happen in any other style of game, but you could see this, you know, kind of resonate with a lot of the other games that come out from the NRS development team. I guess you could say a character like Maya in Killer Instinct. Wasn't that Summoner Quan? I believe it was Summoner Quan, yes. I believe it was Summoner. Uh, you could even say a character like Maya from Killer Instinct, uh, also probably done completely dirty, went from bottom one to probably bottom five in the current version of Killer Instinct. But that's a significantly smaller roster, if I'm not mistaken, than 30. This is so many characters. So many characters. And to see this character never get to win, never even win, only convert his way into four placings in a top eight, and then completely neutered to the point of competitive unviability, is crazy. You could look at a character like Leroy from Tekken 7, who in his debut major tournament took up six of the eight spots of EVO Japan. Of Evo Japan. There was six out of top eight. The grand finals, I believe, was like Julia versus Leroy, but there was six Leroy's all together. Huge amount. I think there was like one Oscar, one Julia or something. Right? Don't, don't quote me on it. But with that patch that nerfed Leroy, he was still very successful and very viable. They had to nerf him again and then again. And I believe he was still pretty okay. He wasn't the best character, he wasn't among the best, like, five characters in Tekken 7 towards the end of the game, but he was still competitively viable. Though I won't say that he was even probably in the top ten. But he, he was definitely not kneecapped as hard as a character, like Summoner Quan, or, in this case, Scorpion from Injustice 1. If you guys know of any other potentially top tiers who were nerfed to the point of absurdity in fighting games... Let me know. I can think of a few more. And let me know in the comment section down below. I can think of a few more, like Sean in the Street Fighter 3 series. Of course, I can mention him. Let me know some down below in the comment section below. Like the video if you liked this style of video and want to see maybe more of these FGC history and patch culture history videos. Subscribe to the channel. I'm hoping to get to a 1,000 subscribers soon. Anyways, this has been Beanie Thuggish for the YouTubes talking about the greatest top tier who never won. Signing out and saying...